Everything we do is going to be about winning. Okay, we're going to learn to do things the right way, and that's the only way we're going to do them. Because if it doesn't help us, we're not doing it, man. That's just as simple as it gets. Win the Super Bowl. That's going to mean it, too. You know, I, I, one of the things that, that the only reason you become a head coach in this league, in my opinion, is to win. That's it. That's the bottom line. If you do it for any other reason, you're wrong. Hey, football fans. Welcome to the Washington Command Center. Well, I looked as bad as the team with my prediction last week after getting ahead of myself, but I think a bounce back's in the cards this week, but it's going to take a parking lot brawl and us leaning on the strength of our top-tier coordinators to get us back on track in this new era of Washington football, an era where this proud franchise can once again command respect. And what better way to kick off this new era than subscribing here to the first, the real, the OG Washington Command Center so you can find your way back to some of the most opinionated and ice-cold calculated takes on all things Washington Commanders. While you're at it, ring that bell, hit that like button. It's free to do, and it means a lot. Okay, as much as it pains me, let's again look back at last week where I saw what the Jets were able to do against the Bills didn't really factor in the in-division aspect of it and thought we could do the same. Boy, was I wrong. Still, I think our defense hung tough all the way until late in the game when the offense's lack of ability to sustain any kind of drive just kept the defense on the field too much and completely gassed them out. Then turnovers just led to the floodgates opening. And I think the end score was far worse than the defense deserved against them. In my opinion, the offense carries the weight of that L. Now, Sam having growing pains is to be expected. I mean, Manning, Brady, Breeze, Russ, everybody has four pick games. That happens. I'm not putting that on him. The Bills defense followed the same game plan that's been a thorn in just about every quarterback side, especially the young ones. You know, one that like, the Vic Fangios, the Staley's, even Jack Del Rio here in Washington use send you know send four, drop everybody else in coverage and make the picture as muddy as possible for quarterbacks, especially those young ones. Ben don't break, keep everything in front of the secondary, and force in our case a young quarterback to play a perfect game of dink and dunk. And we just ran into the perfect storm of falling victim to it. I mean, a combination of Sam not being able to get to his reads quickly, the O-line giving up pressure to just four rushers, our wide receivers not getting out of their breaks quick enough. I mean, it put us in a bad spot. I mean, this isn't all on Sam's time to throw. People are out there putting on that, but look at Jalen. Look at Jalen's time to throw, for God's sakes. You know, he's setting at a whole three seconds every drop back. Yeah, he's got the offensive line to support it, but it's not all on that. Sam is smack in the middle of all quarterbacks in the NFL right now in just his fourth game. Like, he's, it's not that bad. So, we can't put it all on him. His troubles are to be expected. But I think EB's play calling left a lot to be desired last week. I know you're not supposed to run for the sake of running. But if he'd ran the ball more, it could have softened up the Bills' defense, especially when B-Rob was averaging seven yards a carry. I mean, don't worry about, you know, the time of, 
uh, the time left in the game, time to make up the score, just worry about scoring, period, at a certain point. You know, we could have forced them out of that game plan altogether if we'd have stuck to that, made them respect the run, you know, put more guys in the box, cleared up the picture more for Sam, you know, made things easier for the O-line. And with the way B-Rob was running, it could have set Sam up for some massive play-action shots. And it would have kept our defense fresh so that they could have ramped up the pressure late in the game instead of completely wilting from exhaustion. Now, I'm not saying that EB should have gone crazy with the run, but there's just a thousand things he could have done to help our young quarterback instead of playing completely into the opponent's hands. It was... It was pretty disappointing after the first two weeks to see what looked like no in-game corrections. But it happens. And games get away from the best of them. And we were playing a Super Bowl caliber team. So it is what it is. I got ahead of myself with the prediction last week. I was, again, too excited about what the Jets did to them. But if I'm being honest... I still had that loss marked down in my preseason prediction along with a split against the Eagles this season. So I still think we're in line to be the team that I think we are. And I think the lessons that were so apparent in last week's loss are a perfect roadmap for how we can bounce back this week with a win against Philly. Now, Philly's defense is stronger than Buffalo's, in my opinion, everybody's opinion, and will probably face a tougher time running the ball, but I think we need to commit to it just a little bit to keep you know, their defensive line from just teeing off on Sam and keep their D-line chasing and moving around so we can use that misdirection to set up our shots. To take advantage of the fact that Slay and Bradbury can't cover Terry and Jahan all game. And they got a lot of injuries in the linebacker room and in the secondary on their defense too. And we got guys like Curtis and Diami to completely overload them and take advantage of that. So with a, a good blend of the run game... And well-timed shots, we should be able to sustain drives, put points on the board, keep our defense our defense fresh this week, so we can shut Philly's run game down on in our own right. We need to do that, starting with our quarterback. Now, last year we held Hertz to just 48 yards combined in two games, which is Really impressive when you look at the fact that Jalen rushed for 40 in a single game against the 49ers in the playoffs. Then Jalen ran for 70 against the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. So we did better than that in two games. We need to do a lot more of the same as we did last year when we stopped that win streak of theirs. And hold him to, you know, one or two yards here or there when he's scampering to the sideline. to Maybe turn some of those scampers into sacks. I mean, Minnesota, with as bad as their defense is, they were able to get pressure on him. And they were just a tick away from quite a few more sacks themselves. We should certainly be able to outdo them. Last season, Derek Forrest over the top gave Devontae Smith some problems. Now we got some now we got Forbes out there who's looking for some revenge to help double him up, possibly get some turnover opportunities. Then personally, I hope Jamin is the only linebacker on the field today. Most of the game at least. Hopefully. In a spiral most of the game. 
I hope we're mainly in 515, 416, whatever we got to do to get our speed on the field or our beef to stop the run. One or the other, keep Cody Barton off the field. I think our offense and our defense need to come together and make this a straight-up parking lot brawl. Their offense isn't looking as unstoppable as it did at times last year. And we just need to go out there and bust them in the mouth early and often. And I think we need to lean on our coordinators to reach down into that huge experience advantage they have and get grimy. They should be our biggest advantage. Philly lost their offensive coordinator and their defensive coordinator. The ones that got in the Super Bowl are both head coaches somewhere else now. While we gained the offensive coordinator that beat them in the Super Bowl and retained Jack Del Rio, our defensive coordinator, that derailed their win streak last year. So EB needs to get in his bag, make up for last week, modify and expand whatever they did to win the Super Bowl in Philly, adapt it to our guys, run the ball, while Jack Del Rio kicks everything he did last November up a notch, now that he's got Chase in this time, and he's got a new secondary piece in Forbes, hopefully we can generate more pressure, force more takeaways, and come out of Philly with more than a cheesesteak to wash the taste of last week out of our mouths. We need a big-time dub to remind fans that this is a new era in Washington football, an era where this proud franchise can once again command respect. As always, no better way to kick off this new era than subscribing here to the Washington Command Center so you can find your way back to some of the most opinionated or ice-cold calculated takes on all things Washington Commanders. Ring that bell, hit that like button. If you listen this long, I love y'all. Peace.